So Happy New Year. I'm here with three of our Trinity community members who've been involved in safety and security, our focus on that over the last year especially. Uh, could you introduce yourselves and a little bit about your role? Sure. I'm Mason Goss. Uh, I'm the assistant headmaster and also chair of our safety committee here at the school. I'm Cornell Richards. Uh, I'm police officer locally. I'm a father of a kindergartner. That's our second year here. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of the safety and security task force last year. Hey there. Um, my name is Kelly Hernandez, and I'm the school nurse here at Trinity in my second year. And I'm on the safety committee as well and somewhat oversee the, the campus emergency response team. That's great. Well, I want to thank all of you for the roles that you're playing, and there are many more that team with you, and, and this involves the whole community, and this is why we're talking about it, um, wanting to let folks know a little bit about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and also how we all can be involved in making Trinity an even more safe and secure place. So the parent surveys that we do always come back and say that safety ranks highest of almost anything in terms of importance for families. That's probably not surprising, but um, why, why, why do you think that's so? Um, what's that, where's that value come from? And what kinds of safety do you think parents are thinking about when they come to an independent school? Well, I've been uh, working in schools now for almost 30 years, and it, it seems uh, this is our most prized possession, our children. Um, and the three things I sort of hear about a lot over those years of being in schools are the physical safety, the emotional safety, and then the spiritual safety, which is uh, for Trinity especially uh, unique, and we're able to, to try and provide that as well. Cornell? I, I'd agree. Um, for me, when we were looking at schools, we were obviously concerned about a quality education. Um, but considering everything that's going on in the world, physical safety, uh, security plans, um, and just making sure in the event that they were ill, that there's protocols in place for that as well. Yeah. And the why is obvious. Like that's our most precious gift. I think any parent would agree. Yeah. So in my role, health and safety is of the utmost importance. That's why I'm here. And um, I do get a lot of positive feedback from parents letting me know that um, because we have a, a full-time school nurse here that, that that was also a deciding factor for them in choosing Trinity. And I do think that we have a, a higher than average um, population of students with um, specific healthcare needs and especially food allergies and, and things like that, that, um, that they, they really appreciate our, our emphasis and our commitment to the, the health and safety of their children. Yeah, I mean, all schools across the country are being held to a high standard of safety. I think people come to independent schools, private schools, with special um, expectations for, for safety and security. And um, so we're, we're glad to engage in that, and I really appreciate all the work that you all have done. Um, over the last year, we, I mean, we've been working at safety and security for a long time, um, but certainly in the last decade or so, we've focused much more, and certainly since 9-11, the conversations changed drastically um, for schools and, and other events have, have uh, impacted that. But uh, what kind of changes have we seen here at school just in the last year or so, Mason? Yeah, I think in the, in the last year or so, one is um, the convening of a safety task force, and then a standing subsequent standing committee for that safety committee, and an emergency response team here on campus. Uh, some improved physical safety uh, with some, some additional fencing, some new locking systems, our, uh, our lovely badge system here uh, for all employees, so it's very visible both to, to uh, uh, Trinity employees, but also Trinity families to sort of know who, who is here. Um, and then a much more, um, I think, purposeful and proactive uh, relationship with local law enforcement um, than in years past, just uh, much more of an effort there. Um, and then lastly, because of some of the events of the world, uh, practicing some things like lockdown drills, active shooters, which nobody wants to think about, uh, but we, I feel, are much more yeah. prepared for that now. And you, you did a session with the faculty last year, I remember, where you shared some of the Homeland Security's program, what's it called, uh, See Something, Say Something, yeah, is that exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So Trinity is following that, uh, and it's worked well already um, 
and that our communications have improved also between and among employees uh, and with local law enforcement. So uh, there's still more to do, but I think we've really made some great improvements. Yeah, and maybe just a word about the uh, ALICE training sure. that faculty went through. So there is a, a, a program um, that uh, is basically trains people to how to uh, address with young people how to address uh, an active shooter or an imminent threat. Uh, and I'll spare you the acronym, but it's called ALICE. And all of our faculty went through that this, this fall. Uh, in fact, Cornell got to do that. And then our, our colleagues with local law enforcement went through the exact same training. Uh, so we're all on the same sheet of music if something were to happen here at Trinity. Yeah, yeah. And Kelly, you've experienced the locking of the lower school doors. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> I think everything is working well so far. I think um, that parents understand why why that was done, and, and, and we're all in this together, and it, so far so good, I believe. Yeah. It's not without some uh, challenges, and change is always hard, and we talk about culture change around these things because sometimes that's what has to happen. We get used to living a certain way, and the sort of unspoken rules like the doors are open at Trinity or whatever it is. And so when you change that, it, uh, it's hard for people. Some, some folks are um, glad and some folks are uh, thinking that we've lost something and what we've gained. And so there's, there are those challenges. But um, Cornell, what would be some of the, especially the, the things you would think of as a law enforcement officer that are important for schools to think about in terms of habits and practices for safety? So some of the things we've already addressed, like the, the physical, the locks and things like that. I know that as we met last year, I think I was a, a huge uh, fan of locking the front door. Uh, and it's true, it's a cultural shift. So when I was in this meeting thinking like a police officer, like the door should be locked. And then the following year when I go to pull the door, as a parent, like, what's going on here? Uh, it was an adjustment, but at the end of the day, I would much rather have that door lock and know that my six-year-old is safe when I'm on the other side of the city. Um, I think it's a, I'd rather give that up than the convenience. Um, but, you know, definitely want to just be, all parents, all students, all faculty, just be mindful of what's going on on campus. Um, when you're on a beautiful campus like Trinity, and there's, I mean, such a beautiful community of people, it's really easy to become complacent and kind of relax. Mm -hmm. Uh, that you may turn a blind eye to something that, you know, in retrospect, you, you could identify as a threat. Uh, I think that's one of the greatest challenges in a setting like this where you can become really complacent. Um, yeah. So just being proactive and, and vigilant and looking out for things like that. Yeah. Well, we continue to work on that kind of thing. And um, Kelly, maybe you could talk a little bit more about your role as a school nurse, and also we have a school counselor, mm -hmm. um, and how what role those positions play in safety and security here at Trinity. Well, first of all, I think that just the fact that we have a full-time nurse and counselor shows a real commitment by Trinity to the health and well-being of all of our students. And um, many times, you know, a uh, health issue doesn't only involve a physical component, but there's a, an emotional or a psychological aspect to that as well. So the counselor, Michelle, and I work closely together to identify uh, the needs of students and try and meet those needs, whether by ourselves or through other resources in the community. And so um, I think that team approach is, is helpful, and it really allows us to see the students holistically and and try and um, address problems from all angles. And um, I, I think it really serves the community well. Yeah. And you do uh, certain kinds of faculty and staff training uh, for? Uh... Uh, yes. Uh, at the beginning of the year, all of anyone who has uh, interactions with students are required to have bloodborne pathogen training and certain things that are required by OSHA. Those happen at the beginning of the year. We have. Um, a campus emergency response team that we've mentioned before and um, that through that we have uh, faculty and staff members on each floor of each building that have been trained in CPR in use of the AED the defibrillators and also trained in administration of epinephrine for use in emergencies so um, we're 
we're really well covered in emergency situations here on campus, and um, so that's a that's part of what I do. Yeah. And we also have an athletic trainer who yes. is um, on site for home games and yes. um, available. And, and we also work together to keep each other informed. If, if there's an accident or an injury during an athletic event, she lets me know. And, and so I can keep an eye on the kids you know, while they're going through, a, through the school day and, and vice versa. So we all work together, and um, it makes for a nice environment. And yeah. it's, it's really, it's, I think, it, I really think it serves the children and the, and the families well. Right. Communication is key among all these staff so that if there's an injury uh, that involves a concussion on a soccer field or on a basketball court, then it's important for you to know and for the teachers to know. And uh, that kind of, um, trying to set up protocols for that kind of communication has been really important. Yeah. Speaking of protocols, are there other safety protocols that we have in place, Mason, that uh, you'd want to mention? Uh, we do. Um, as far as uh, I mentioned, the lockdown training with, with faculty, so whether it be a tornado drill, fires, um, different scenarios, the, the faculty has all been through some training. Uh, they, should, they all do know what to do in the case of an emergency. Um, that can go from the front desk person all the way to the part-time uh, PE teacher. So we've all, we all know what is, is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would loop in, I would include that our, uh, law enforcement, obviously, uh, EMTs, they, they all know our plans as well. Yeah. So. yeah. so, Cornell, could you talk a little bit about the relationship of law enforcement to the school and um, how is that important and how has Trinity developed that relationship? I think it's of paramount importance and I'm really impressed with the job that uh, the Masons done, kind of bridging that gap. I'm from Durham. I went to Jordan High School on the other end of the road and didn't know Trinity existed until we started searching for schools three years ago. Um, and in the event of an emergency, that's not the time you want your officers to say, is it Trinity School? Where is it? Yeah. All right, so getting them on campus, you know, the tours, allowing us to be a part of the lockdown drills, knowing how the staff is trained, uh, the opportunity to give feedback from those drills. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with the way you've handled those things. So. That you guys are doing a really good job there. Yeah. Well, Mason gets a lot of credit for that. As a oh. former law enforcement officer, he's uh, he knows his way around um, and those conversations. And yeah. Well, the Durham police have been been great, and they've been uh, almost all of our lockdowns to, to cr critique how we do things and always give very helpful feedback. So thank you. It's like I said, and as they say, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Yeah. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a city police officer or a deputy sheriff that doesn't know how to get to the six, you know, public high schools in Durham. But Trinity is off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. And other than an alarm call, I don't, even having been here for the last couple of years, I've never heard anybody talk about Trinity outside of these uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, now you've got the, the off-duty officers working here. Yeah. And it's so, it seems like it's been a relatively small kind of cohort of guys mm -hmm. that are working. Yeah. So those relationships between the students, the staff, the mm -hmm. property itself, the layout, that's, yeah. uh, those conversations are awesome. Yeah. And one of those officers is a Trinity alum. Yes, yeah. pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, Jack Wagstaff, it's great to have him out here sometime. Officer of the year that yes, yeah, and right. Officer of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> he just got the uh, Crisis Intervention Team Officer of the Year as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's, done, he's, uh, he's a fine product of he's Trinity. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> We're very proud of Jack and hope we have more, more alums who go into law enforcement. Yeah. And, um, folks ask us about the presence of police on campus. Can we expect to, that to continue? And uh, uh, I, I think we will. Yeah. Uh, it, it will. I think uh, we hear more positive than anything about that. I think it's reassuring to, to families. And then Kelly, please chime in if, if you have heard other. But I think parents really appreciate that. Um, just uh, following up on what Cornell said, the, the officers that come, it, it is a small group of probably six to eight that rotate through, and they tell me now that they actually look for this job when it comes up. They really mm -hmm. love being here on campus, interacting with the kids uh, and, and the faculty. So I feel like we're in a good place, uh, and I'm just very thankful for, for the law enforcement. Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing that's really added to the success of that implementation is as we met last year, kind of talking about what would be the expectation roles, what would that deployment look like, and kind of finding that happy medium so that you don't have 
uniformed armed police officers strolling the halls, distracting children, doing the class, alarming them. Uh, so I think that's probably played that's a huge a role. Point. Yeah, that's a good point. They try to blend in uh, quietly, but but do their jobs protecting yeah. us, and they do it well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. I've appreciated the way the conversation has gone to think about you know what is Trinity's culture and climate and and how can we make this a more secure and safe place but also as much as possible uphold those uh, those core values of the school um, community is such an important part of who we are as a school and um, I feel like that over the last year we've been able to increase uh, police presence and and to reinforce that community and, and just build it stronger so I'm thankful for that and um, you know we'll be continuing this conversation probably trying some other things um, you know there are continued um, options on the table that we think about and we certainly will communicate with parents as we roll those out but um, we are always um, glad to get feedback from parents about the things that you, uh, parents are experiencing maybe we could wrap up by just talking about parents how, how can parents help to make Trinity a safer and more secure place? What are things that parents can do? Kelly, you wanna? Well, in my role, I always appreciate communication from parents uh, letting me know, uh, again, I'm health and wellness. And so, uh, you know, if your child has the flu or if your child has strep throat or if, if there's anything out of the ordinary going on at home that can um, affect the the classroom yep. uh then i really 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 appreciate being informed of those situations the teachers do a really good job of letting me know when they get the the word on things like that but um feel free to communicate directly with me that's always very helpful if the parents can do that and um that's that's what i'm all about <laughs> yeah that's great i appreciate that other thoughts i just think that uh, you know a lot of times people would put off the health or their safety to the medical staff or to police. That's really everybody's responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a parent on this campus, if you're coming and going two times a day, uh, five days a week, you're gonna see things that you, you, you know what's supposed to be here, what's mm -hmm. not, right? You, you'll get to a point where you can recognize cars and faces even if you don't know names. Um, so as a parent coming and going from campus, it's just, I think it's paramount important uh, to just be alert to see what's going on. And if you see anything out of place, yeah. if you see something, say something. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a tactful way of doing that yeah. without you know, alarming anyone or offending anyone. Um, I just think the greatest risk to safety is just complacency. Yeah, yeah we, uh, I, I noticed you've got your parent name tag on and that, I mean, that simple thing about putting those on to, um, if we see someone that doesn't have one on, you know, very politely, but gently but firmly just suggest, hey, you, you checked in at the front desk and just um, those kinds of, um, just having our antenna up. And we want Trinity to always be a welcoming place to everyone that comes on campus. We have prospective parents and people who are vendors and people interviewing for jobs and people coming to um, help be guest teachers. And we want to always welcome everyone, but just this culture of sort of being vigilant Anything uh, you would say? I think the only thing I'd add is as, as partners with, with our parents, you know, if you have uh, ideas or questions, please yeah. please stop a teacher. If they don't know the answer, they'll, they'll come find one of us uh, and we'll try and address that. But uh, you know, we'd love to hear more feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that I take this chance to mention is just driving on campus. I think that's one thing that parents can um, be really careful about. I mean if we think about probability of the kind of accident that could happen here on campus, um, people driving fast, people driving with cell phones and distracted, um, just when you come on campus, go slowly. Um, please don't pass. Please don't pass. <laughs> Pick up line. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. And I uh, know it, it takes some patience sometimes and we have to wait, but um, that's, a, that's a good uh, virtue to develop anyway, so yeah. Well, thank you all for joining me today to talk about safety and security, and thank you for all that you do thank to you. make Trinity a safer guys. and more secure place. Non-nobis. Non